We're going to end this lesson with a bonus example. For my students that are taking my class on campus, you're going to have to be able to graph a log by hand. And up until this point, the only logs we've been able to graph are natural logs and common logs, because that's the only log we knew how to put in our calculator. But now that we have that change of base formula, or more specifically, that alpha window number five, we can put in any log into our calculator now. So my bonus example says for the function f of x, what is the horizontal and or vertical shift? So inside opposite, that plus, you want to think it goes to the right, but it's going to go the opposite. So that's going to go left, 5. And then minus 3, outside same, it's going to go down 3. So now let's graph this. So let's put this into our calculator here. So in my Y1, I'm going to go alpha window and go down to number 5. And now I can put in log base 2 of x plus 5, get out of those parentheses, and then minus 3. If you have a TI-83, uh, you have to use that change of base. So instead of being able to punch in log base 2 of x plus 5, you have to do the log of what it is of, log of uh, x plus 5 divided by log of the base, so log 2, and then you'll include that minus 3 at the end. So if you are using that change of base, that's how you have to type it in. So... Now I'm going to go zoom 6 because this is a standard negative 10 to 10, negative 10 to 10, scale of 1 is a standard. So here's my graph. Okay, we're going to talk about this graph on here, here in a second, but I'm first going to get a table. So I'm going to go second graph to go to my table. And let's find some table values. So I'm going to go all my whole numbers that I can. On your test, it's going to tell you specifically plot at least three points, plot at least four points. So you only need as many as you, as it, you know, requires. But I still like to do literally every number that I can fit in here that is a whole number. So I'm going to go negative four, negative three. Uh, the next one is good. Negative three, negative two. Here's all whole numbers at negative 1, negative 1. We have 3, 0. Let's see if we can fit one more on here. Um, that's not really going to fit, but we'll go ahead and include it. 11 and 1. Okay, so I'm going to plot all of these points. And before I connect that point, we have an asymptote here. And where is it? With logs, we have vertical asymptotes. And vertical asymptotes are going to happen where your first error is. So I scroll back up. Here is my first error. My first error is when x equals negative 5. This is where my vertical asymptote is. So here at x equals negative 5, put my dashed lines and label my vertical asymptote here at x equals negative 5. So we did talk about this last lesson, but just to reiterate, here's what my graph looks like. So it kind of looks like it starts right here, but we have to remember it keeps getting closer to this vertical asymptote. Your calculator can only make it look so close without it crossing or touching that line, so it just stops. But we need to remember this is going to continue to go down forever. So there is my graph. 
So to end this, let's see the domain and range. And from the graph, we can go left to right. When I go to the, start from the left, the first thing I encounter is that vertical asymptote. So we're at parentheses, negative five, and then it's gonna keep going forever. So positive. And you can also take what's in parentheses here, x plus five, and set it to be greater than zero. When you subtract that over, you get x must be greater than negative five, which is what we get right here. And then my range, as I go from the bottom to the top, we go arrow to arrow. Your range for all logs is always going to be negative infinity to infinity.